All right, welcome back again to More Than PGA's Gaming. I'm your host, Mune, and today we are going to be covering uh, another epic dungeon. Uh, let's see, which one is next on our list? Uh, we've been just moving through them so quickly. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and do a Lair of Lost Mouth. This dungeon is quite unique. Uh, the first unique part about it is, is that it takes place at night outside originally and then proceeds to go inside to a wonderful uh, area. So uh, first things first, you want to go ahead and approach this golem and take it out as quickly as you can with your group. Okay, um, golems are easy targets rather than big groups. Uh, over here we have a group still taken care of uh, you have to defeat four wardens that means four groups that means four groups of enemies or golems Could be a combination if you want um, these enemies are not very friendly towards weaker groups uh, I would suggest fighting the iron golems if you can help it and just focus on them You do not have to fight any more than four. It looks like these guys just kind of want to beat up on another golem for no apparent reason. Monsters, they all are. Alright, so. Get up here. You touch the thing. And this will initiate the first boss battle against the Dragon Soul Veshal. Uh, thing to note about him is he is riding a mount. Um, I'm not sure of any other enemies that ride mounts throughout the game, but he does. You might want to approach with Bane and quickly go into uh, support roles with Circle of Power and uh, the usual Templar's Wrath. Um, you can support the party if you want by giving them extra defense. I recommend Shield of Faith for that, but in this case, there really isn't any reason to uh, be worried. If you were in a weaker party, you might want to keep your distance a little bit more if you were uh, a DPS, mainly because that enemy can hurt rather quickly, especially that uh, Drake that he was riding. The fall will never kill you. Not, not that one anyway. Um, this is where the interesting part gets, okay? Um, there are three paths here. Upon defeating this group of enemies, one set of doors will open. Depending on what set of doors open, depends on what kind of task you'll be asked to do. Okay? The right one has, uh, I believe, two lava jumps and a few enemies. The middle one doesn't really have any lava jumps, but has some, uh... pedestals that shoot flames uh, fireballs at you and then the left one has by far the most platforming you will ever see in the game okay you are seeing the truth okay um not everybody will get bounced around like that um so you can laugh at me a little bit i want to i want to see if anybody has a better video of being bounced around by fireballs Oh. Oh no, I'm, I'm down. I'm gonna back up. That's the weird thing about bouncing that. Sometimes people can make it over just fine. Other times, not so much. Depends on how you're doing. And then the the fun part. Uh, usually there's a golem here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this junk. Um, and then. The trick here is to jump over these without dying. You'll notice that I am not dead. And I'm going to use some temp HP so I can jump across this a little bit easier. Um, you don't necessarily have to use temp HP. And there are some classes that can just simply walk across the lava uh, without any problems whatsoever. I'm not one of those people. When you get up here, there will be 
this is the converging spot for all three of the paths, as you can kind of see. And there'll be a group of enemies here. Upon defeating them, you will get a uh, platforming obstacle. And then when you get here, the most important thing to do, resummon your companion. <laughs> simple and most crucial thing here because there is a boss beyond this point um so beyond here is the two uh fire scorpions they are kind of a nightmare and a half to uh take down when you first do it and they would be easily considered the most powerful enemy in the dungeon okay so keep that in mind uh when i originally did this uh as a tank i had to lure one of the scorpions away by going to the back of the area and my allies would have to try to solo or the, the rest of them would have to be uh fight the other one now i kind of tank both of them at the same time it's a little bit trickier because Got to try to keep their attention. All the while debuffing them and keeping them preoccupied with, well, you. Uh, we quickly dispatched that one. Um, because of the party's abilities, uh, I didn't have to go too far away um, if for whatever reason the party was not as strong as it was or I, or I was not as strong of a tank as I am uh, I would draw back the other scorpion way back here while the other my allies would be fighting the other scorpion way over here in this area so it's quite a distance to cover, and the reason being is simply because they, they just couldn't handle the heat of two. And I couldn't handle the heat of two. So. Alright, and as you can see, I did refill my action points. Um, that's generally what this is for. These are lower level enemies. Uh, they aren't meant for anything else. This is a graphical glitch, as you can see. Uh, and you walk in, you're invisible, and then, oh, yeah. Look at that. Conveniently. So there is a point where the two converge a little bit, so. Alright, so, last but not least, we get the introduction of Lost Mouth. You can kind of see him down there. Um, I don't really like so fighting him, but some people do. Some interesting things that you can get from this boss are what is that? <laughs> um, you can get a lost mouth horn of blasting uh, from him, a golden belt of pusinance, or uh, a variety of other things like. Uh, his neck piece. I always forget what it's called. I don't use it. And I... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, after he takes so much damage, he flies up into the air. And then he drops stalactites on people. So it's basically just word for rock. Oh, uh, who's dying? Where are they dying? Okay. I'm a tank. Uh, yeah. I can take these. I don't expect anybody else to. Um, oh. Yay. I'm fine. Um, quick note. The stalactites can kill a lot of people that are lo under gear scored for this. Or even matching gear score. Uh, which is really sad. Like, it's a powerful attack. Um, he brings in pools of lava off to the side and fireballs all around. 
Um, at one point, he will start targeting people with a laser eye move, which can be uh, redirected, I guess, uh, using a variety of skills, but it's nothing too fancy. Uh, I thought I saw he, that he dropped something. No. Uh, oh, it's just his hand. Hand's glowing. Um, yeah, where, where's the exit? Okay, there's the exit. So, again, there are two chests. Um, I do not have the chest key for the other one. Uh, yeah, I got briars. Who cares? Um, and I, you have to pick a piece of gear. The other chest requires a arcane or legendary dragon key. I don't recommend it in any way or form, but that's just me. And it looks like uh, one of my group mates got a canvas gauntlet. <laughs> um, hopefully he drop he goes and salvages those. Uh, I don't ever recommend keeping those. They're absolutely horrendous. They will make you go broke before you even know it. So don't put them on. Uh, in fact, don't even keep them. Because <laughs> I've heard of problems where people kept them and then the next thing they knew they were broke takes their all of their gold so so try try not to keep them just get rid of them break them down get the diamonds that you want from them never have to worry about them ever again all right so that was epic layer of lost mouth or elol or i call it lol but unfortunately nobody wants to use it uh, so hopefully that video was this video was very informative and there really wasn't much to the Lair of Lost Mouth with this group, but with a uh, lower item level group, it could be severely more challenging. So be wary, uh, make sure you play your class accordingly in there, and for the love of God, if you're not good at platforming, don't go there. <laughs>